everybody, I'm Dave Woloshin. There are some who think that racquetball players are amongst the great athletes of the day. My broadcast partner, speaking of great athletes, is Marty Hogan. And if I can get him off the court, I'll bet he'll agree with that great athlete stuff. Well, Dave, I know I might be a little partial, but the athlete that plays on this court here today is something special. He's fast, he's strong, and he's in tremendous physical condition. Welcome to the VCI World Racquetball Championships. It's going to be intense. Yeah! Yeah! It's going to be loud. You gotta hit her first. Hit it's going to be fast. Dickerson, the old Greyhound 
keeps coming, keeps coming, never quits. He plays a lot of strategy, and against a player who's as talented as Drew, you really have to you, you have to lose, use all the guile and intellect you can muster up. Here comes a great opportunity, great get. Drew with the perfect pass down the line. Oh, he's got that football mentality. I guess I probably let a lot of, let a lot of anger out in the racquetball court. Oh, but that's a good get, right? <laughs> a lot of things change once that door shuts. How many setups in the center of the court can you give someone? How many? How many setups in the center of the court? I like to play close, so if someone gets in the way, you kind of have to go for the ball no matter where it is. You know, in close matches, usually that's when I, I think the, the better players pull out the tough matches, guys who have been training, the guys who are ready to play that kind of uh, level. They pull out those close matches. Once the door shuts, there's no friends. I mean, I'm, you know, Ruben's a great guy, and all these guys, a lot of guys are, these, are, are good guys, but once the door shuts, there's no friends, no friends, no friends. It figures the physical player would be a Dallas Texan, wouldn't it? Must be a Cowboy fan. Certainly must be. We uh, are giving you a quick look at these cool finals. Now, sometimes these matches will go two and a half hours or so. They can be Bounce. grueling. And there's the sportsman. Ruben Gonzalez, Drew thanks him, hey, said no. two bounces, didn't he? Absolutely. I mean, it's a, it's a real professional courtesy when you know you don't get it, but you sort of acknowledge that, uh, you know, that you didn't get it. Players do uh, do enjoy do enjoy that sportsmanship part of the game. Great shot by Ruben, a fadeaway forehand. Drew didn't think it was good. Side Listens out. for the call. Side out. And gets the bad news. He lost the rally. I don't think he's still Magic convinced, points. but Gonzalez will take it nonetheless. Closing in on the match. Goes with the defensive serve, takes Drew back to the ceiling. He's got the setup. Tremendous good Oh, and Drew hits it into the ground, and Ruben wins the match. So Gonzalez gets into the semifinals. quarterfinal pits Tim Doyle serving the number six player in the world with a dynamite serve by the way against the number three ranked player Mike Ray who's left-handed so you better know which side is forehand and which side is backhand Marty. Oh absolutely and especially against a, a player like Mike Ray who has such a big wingspan out there he can get to just about everything so you have to make sure that those angles and those kills are down. You see how important that serve is? Doyle controlled both these points basically because of his serve. He takes a lot of a lot of chances. He's a gambler. He goes for that hard drive serve, knowing that he may not have a second chance if he short serves just like that. Yeah, and only one serve for the pros, unlike the other leagues that you may play in where you get two, only one here. So if you gamble and lose, it could really cost you. It's given Mike Ray a chance to get back in here. There's a big forehand down the line by Tim Doyle, and boy, he can really hit that ball hard. Side is out. Is he one of the hardest hitters in the game? He is. He definitely is. His shots have been Point timed up, up, up over 180 miles an hour. So that Paul is really cooking. Mike Ray likes to go to the ceiling shot quite a bit, a defensive shot in the game. He is, and... My, and in quite the different game style, Tim Doyle is a very aggressive player. He goes for the bottom board a lot. Great get, Mike Ray between the legs. Another opportunity, but the pass was too wide for him. It went five games, but then the upset was put in the record books. Tim Doyle is on into the semis.
Menard Streetcars racing for the prestigious fastest streetcar shootout. Then the wheel stand and tire smoke of 409 Hemi and shotgun powered nostalgia superstar can score off for cash, prizes, and glory. Plus the fabulous DKO Stangs, Scooters, Vets, and Camaros competing in NMCA style heads up racing and the Carcraft Goodyear Collector Series Tire Car Show. It's Pendleton Metal Saturday and Sunday, the 17th and 18th at the Texas Motorplex for the action packed NMCA Flowmaster Muscle Challenge. Tickets only 10 bucks, kids under 12 free. <laughs> International Amateur Sporting Event, the World University Games, Saturday and Sunday afternoons, live on ESPN. Our third quarterfinal has number two ranked Andy Roberts, a rocket launcher of a player, against the 10th ranked rookie, Mike Guidry. Blessed with speed on 19-year-old legs, he can really move, but Roberts is the guy moving him all over the place. I think that we've got a, a matchup here of very similar game styles, but you have Andy who's controlling the front of the court and the center of the court, which is where most of the wars are won. Inexperience is going to play a big part in this match. You could see from Skycam the way the angles were created for the power of Andy Roberts. Notice, too, how Andy uses the angles of the court, always keeps Mike off balance, down. and basically doesn't give him an opportunity to set up and to get his power game going. Gidry telling himself, keep it down. He's setting things up for Roberts, but I think the serve has something to do with it. It certainly does. And then you simply have a situation where Andy, who's a seasoned veteran, is playing against a player with a lot of ability. And really, quite frankly, in the coming years, we're going to be hearing a lot from Mike Gidry. He's an up-and-comer, but it was easy for Andy Roberts. Three straight, and he's in the semis. Final features the number one player in the world, Cliff Swain, against ninth-ranked Jack Newman. Swain is number one in racquetball, but he could be tops in other sports. Hey, this might not be my only time at bat at this plate, you know. I've tried crazier things. Played tennis, maybe baseball's next. I played uh, a few satellites, uh, won some rounds, so it wasn't a, it wasn't a total loss. Um, did some traveling, won a few matches. It was it was definitely a good experience. So you know, I always wanted to play. Uh, I mean, I just love all games. Wish I had a hundred years to just play each game for ten years and then move on that way. I kind of think that you can do whatever you want to do. I mean, baseball, tennis. If you believe it within yourself, I think you can pull anything off. You have to be a good athlete to play racquetball. I mean, it's. I kind of put it up with hockey as far as athleticism. It, re it requires all around athleticism. There's speed, diving, diving, speed, diving. I mean, you have to be a good athlete to play any sport, but certain sports require more athleticism, I think. I think racquetball is one of them. That was one of the reasons I played tennis, because it does have that, I mean, as an athlete, um, the dream is always to play in front of large audiences like this. Racquetball is really growing also, so it's not, it's not a total loss. Being number one at anything, I don't care what it is, it's, it's just the best feeling in the world. I guess I'll uh, have to go back to the racquetball court now. Back to reality, right? But off to a good start here in reality land. He leads two games to nothing in the best of five. There's that big forehand. Look at that reflex. Tremendous shot by Cliff Swain. Marty, when you're number one, as you were for so many years, is it tough to stay focused when everybody wants to take a shot at you? Well, I think it, it, it becomes other responsibilities that you have to, great shot there by Cliff, that you have to be willing to take on. And that one responsibility is, is that you have really nowhere to go but down, and everybody else you play has something great to achieve by beating the best player in the world. Jack Newman just trying to get something going, figuring out a way to get back in this match. Tremendous forehand. That ball flat rolled out. And to illustrate that shot, here's a tip from pro Dave Johnson. The back wall.
is supposed to be your friend, not your enemy. So what I'm going to do is show you a few things that will help you with it. I see a lot of lower players, when the ball's coming high and deep, they'll either jump at it instead of letting it come off, or they'll panic and hit it into the back wall. What I think you should do is when the ball goes back, follow the ball back and move forward with the ball. This will enable you to get more power on your shot and make it easier to hit an accurate shot. I'd like to demonstrate one for you right now. And what happens is you go back with it, move forward with it. That's for the average player. Now for the advanced player, this is a shot I made up myself. It's the, the no-look shot. And I would recommend that you don't try that at home because I am a professional. <laughs> <laughs> Great advice, Dave, but your ball skipped. Marty, when you were number one, the sport was at its highest popularity. It leveled off a bit, but Commissioner Hank Marcus of the Tour says the game's booming again. We really feel with the, with the athletes that we have on the Pro Tour, the type of ability that they have and the excitement that they generate when they play, that we're going to take racquetball to that level again, that, uh, that there was a quiet period. The sport continued to grow, but it just grew at such a slow pace compared to the 70s that it appeared not to be growing. And we're in a steady growth pattern. The Pro Tour is in a tremendous growth pattern, and we look forward to leading the sport to the next level. The tide has really turned here in this quarterfinal match. Jack Newman has come back and has a chance to upset the top player in the world, Cliff Swain. Great get off the back wall. Big forehand. Great get. Oh, tremendous shot, Jack Newman. Newman, who was down two games to nothing, wins in five. Goodbye, Cliff Swain. Hello, semi for Jack Newman.
objective when I am serving is to get the ball back into the corners. One of the serves is to the backhand is my, is my favorite. Uh, if you can get the balls into the corners when you're serving, you're going to get a lot of pro problems for your opponent. You're going to want to pick a spot on the front wall and find your angle uh, that's going to make the ball travel into the corner. Uh, you're going to want to try and get to the ball to bounce into this area here and then back into the corner back in here. When you get the ball back on the corner, it can either go straight out and come off the sidewall or it may pop out into you. And that's where you get a lot of weak setups uh, for yourself and, and score some easy points. This semifinal is now two hours old. We are in the fifth game. We just saw the power serve. What about that lob serve? I think Andy's trying to really slow down the pace of the match and not giving Tim an opportunity to get in that bang bang style that he likes right there. And there he wins a big point in the right corner. Let's go. You go to church cry today? about his breaks every time I play. It breaks, breaks, breaks. Did you go to church today? Yes, I did. Good. Looks like you, you never get any breaks. Every time I play, I get all the breaks. A little psychological warfare going on on that court, Dave. Uh, I get the feeling these two don't like each other. They really are. Uh, they're not the best of friends, and they're both very competitive, and they play the same style of game, so uh, no one wants to lose to somebody else. Let's play it again. Oh, oh my God! God. That's a terrible it ball. It wasn't even close to That's him not being there. absolute terrible it wasn't even, ball call. It was not even close to him not being there. He was oh, all Jesus. over that shot. A guy sitting in a chair telling uh, me it's not close. Right there. He's on the right. ground. It was all got that blindfolded. That is an that absolute terrible ball easily. racquetball call. I could have got that blindfolded. For those of you who ref amateur racquetball, that will that is never a hinder. Unless you have speed like mine. Yeah. That's always a hinder. <laughs> okay, Marty, you've heard Dave Johnson's call. Is it a good one or a bad one? I tend to agree with Andy. I mean, it's a judgment call, but there Andy doesn't give up the, the direct angle to the ball, which every opponent must have the opportunity of at least having a chance to get to it. But what Andy plants, there's nobody that's getting by his butt. There's the ball, and there's the angle. Very tough. I don't think he would have got it. An opening for Doyle. Big serve. Big serve. Doyle is now taking advantage of a little bit of a shift in momentum here late in the match. He can tie the game here. He needs that big serve. Nine serves, ten. Tremendous kill shot there by Andy Roberts. A big time rollout in the most critical part of the match. Andy it's Roberts possible. dead. Match point serves nine. I think he's feeling as much pressure as Andy is. Sure looks that way. feels it worse than his son does. Doyle said he gave it to him. Nine serves, ten. Good, good recovery by Andy Roberts after making a weak return. Possible match point serves, nine. That has Mr. Roberts a little bit happier. Andy's still staying with the uh, slower defensive serve. Here's an opportunity. He buries it. Roberts wins. Great match. Andy Roberts from Memphis, Tennessee. The first yes. into the finals. A well-deserved two-hour-plus contest against two of the hardest hitters in the game. Your car doesn't look, doesn't feel, doesn't smell brand new anymore. The thrill is gone. Get it back with new vinyl. New vinyl conditions, restores, and protects vinyl and leather. There's no rubbing, no buffing. New vinyl penetrates and dries in seconds. You get a protective finish and a showroom feel that's so real you can smell it. Mm, just like a brand new car. But all that was easy. 
Watch new vinyl make the seat of this junkyard car look like new. Now it's softer, more supple. Even gives these tires a showroom shine. So whether your car is really old or just feeling old, new vinyl will bring it back fast. There's only one new vinyl. It's guaranteed. Want it back? That new car feeling? It's yours with new vinyl. There's only one new vinyl, available at Sears, Pep Boys, Rite Aid, True Value, Ace, Western Auto, Eckert, Walgreens, Kmart, and other leading stores. It's, it's all pretty bizarre. It's an exercise. It, it gets the bizarreness out. Sports Center, God's gift to television. The best of Sports Center, tomorrow on the ESPN. tournament thus far has to be the Cinderella Jack Newman. Number nine in the world, he surprised everybody, including the top player, Cliff Swain. But here's Ruben Gonzalez. He's where he should be, number four. A gentleman who fought his way out of the ghetto now lives in Staten Island and somehow, someway, always seems to be around for the big ones. Marty, we saw power versus power in our first semi. This is more control. Nobody with a great power shot here. Yeah, this are a these players play within their ability. They know they don't have the real strong power that the other harder hitters have, but they do have tremendous retrieving ability, and there's a great get by Ruben. And then Newman skips the backhand. That was a tough rally, but tough is what Gonzalez is used to, coming from Spanish Harlem. I got out of the ghetto. I got out of the street uh, on my own, and so my incentive to go out there is to get one kid or two kids out, out of the ghetto and I let them know that you know you could do anything you want in life if you go for it you know maybe God gave me that opportunity to play racquetball so I could become the image and that role model in racquetball so I could give back to the community the more I compete and the more I kind of get out there to the public and to the kids and everything like that it just makes me feel good the type of game I have is a uh, aggressive a motivation. It's not an anger game or anything. It just has to come from your heart. It has to come from your gut. Uh, and I think I have that because coming from the street. And, and you've got to have a lot of gut to, you know, to go out there and fight for what you have. And this is what I have, I'm fighting for what I have. I love the game, fighting for what I have. I love to compete, I'm fighting, I'm fighting, I'm fighting. I love the, the thrill of beating the younger players. And they call me the old man, and how, how can this old man go out there and beat me and everything? And when I hear that, it's not a, it's, it, it just makes me feel good to know that these guys are worried about this old guy. I consider them my fountain of youth. When you drink a glass of water, that's that's your fountain of youth. These guys here, when I beat them, it's like I'm eating them alive. And those are my fountain of youth. So the more I beat them, the younger I get. So when I hit 45, I want to be the number one player. I want to be the, the oldest player on the tour, the oldest player to win. As long as I have a good health, my family and everybody, I think that's, that's what it's all about. We are in game three of the semifinal, and Ruben Gonzalez serving for his life. He's down two games to nothing. Ooh, good reverse pinch with the backhand, and Jack is on. definitely on. Let's go. That's one of the reasons why Newman leads two games to nothing. He just doesn't seem to miss. He's in a real groove out there, and Ruben isn't really changing his game style up. He's just sort of feeding him shallow backhand, and there's another one. Why he keeps going to that backhand, I don't know. Newman just doesn't seem to miss. These are not unforced errors by Gonzalez. These are all winners by number nine ranked Newman. And Jack continues to gain more confidence as the match goes on. He just continues to shoot that backhand. There's another perfectly execu uh, executed pinch. Marty, he's done it uh, different ways, too. He Some really with has. the pinch, others with passes. He's just on fire. What Newman's doing is he's also mixing up his lob serves, giving him cross-court high Z's to his forehand and now to his backhand, just keeping Ruben a little bit guessing. There's a stab attempt, and it's good! the shot of the tournament right there. Just a tremendous reaching lunge, just a
desperation lunge to try to get it back, and it cracks out in the front wall. And Newman says, how'd he do that? Where did that match come from? Match point serves eight. Tremendous shot. Now we pick it up at match point. Great get, Ruben. Here comes an easy setup. Another great get. The left side's open, and Newman hits it for the game. The Cinderella story continues. Jack Newman, first he knocks off the number one ranked Cliff Swain. Now it's number four, Ruben Gonzalez, who goes down. It's Newman in the finals against Andy Roberts. Here's the real beauty of Rust-Oleum protective coatings. A tough barrier against the elements. Rust-Oleum, the name that means protection. Sports Illustrated gets you ready for NFL football in this exciting new video, Inside Football 93. Free with your paid subscription to Sports Illustrated. The best way to get inside the action for over 24 million readers. Call this number now and get the best of last season, plus Sports Illustrated's views on the next champion. I like San Francisco to beat Dallas in one of the greatest championship games. Plus, you'll get a second video free with your paid subscription. The NFL video yearbook of your favorite team. Pick any one of the 28 teams and get their best from 92 and a preview of 93. Free from Sports Illustrated. Get two free videos inside football and the team video of your choice, plus 54 issues of Sports Illustrated, including the two big football previews for only $1.39 an issue. Save over 52% off the cover price. For quicker delivery, use your credit card. Every week, Sports Illustrated makes sure you really get in the game. Nobody's into sports like Sports Illustrated. Get into it. What does it take to beat Andy Roberts? I think the thing that it's going to take for uh, Jack Newman to win today is he's going to have to be extremely patient. He's going to have to wait for his opportunities. He's going to have to really pinch that ball in the corners a lot to force Roberts to move. Uh, Roberts' game is one of sheer power. He's got an absolute cannon for a forehand, and if he can set up and unleash his forehand, he's going to be very tough to stop. This game is, in my opinion, is a straight, straight up pick 'em game. With Andy's psyche now, he's expected to win. Does that help him? Does that hurt him, the pressure? You know, I think it, it, it sort of has to help him. Uh, coming into this match, Jack Newman, uh, Jack Newman has no pressure on him. He's just going to go out and play his game. But Andy Roberts feels he's the best player in the world, and the best player in the world should win the big matches in the biggest tournaments, and that's what we have here today. What a week this has been for Jack Newman. In the first round, it was Dave Johnson in five, then the shocker against Cliff Swain, the number one player in the world. In the semis, it was all Jack over Gonzalez. How does he keep the roll going? Well, I got to execute real good. Uh, my key is going to be my serves. I want to hit a uh, real good lob to keep Andy in the deep court and execute a lot of pinch shots to drive him forward. Andy Roberts hopes to regain the number one spot. First, he knocked off Aaron Katz this week. Then it was Mike Guidry in the semifinals, the only real test. That was against Tim Doyle. How does he beat Jack Newman? Well, I think the key to this match is return a serve. Um, he's going to probably give me a lob serve, and if I return that effectively, I, I think I have uh, the ability to win this match. Um, same thing for him, I think. Uh, he's got to return my serve. Uh, we, we're a good matchup. We pick up this match with game two. Andy Roberts won the first game 11 to two. Very much in control. I got a break, finally! Jack sort of looking for a little help from up above here to get his game rolling. Interesting matchup, these two. It's Roberts' power and the control game of uh, Jack Newman. which is correct because Andy has trouble moving forward. Skip ball. Ball skip no Side good, out. but that's what Jack wants. Jack wants those setups off the back wall. <laughs> Terrific. Guess. Big forehand. 
just he's, he's just planted in the center of the court, and he's just and Jack is just going right into his strong points, right into his forehand. serving for the game.
travel to the length of the cord. A good way to practice the ceiling ball is just to come into the racquetball court, drop it, and strike it to the ceiling into the front wall in a rally situation. Your goal is to keep it to the deep part of the court without it coming off the back wall or touching the side walls, like so. Once again, the key is to have a nice controlled swing with a stiff wrist. Don't overhit it. Don't try to over-execute this shot. Remember, it's a defensive shot. It should be easy on you to hit and make it tough on your opponent. We are tied 1-1 as we go to game three of this zero, championship zero. match. Jack Newman will serve to Andy Roberts. Pretty content with going with a, a deep defensive serve, high lob, uh, deep off that glass, Final so Andy zero. can't like run up and cut it off and take it out of the air. Andy trying to cut it off, but the serve is, is well and deep. Skip ball. Ooh, Love big skip, skip ball. Point. Andy Point seems eight. to be a little flat-footed now. He's not see. Uh, it doesn't seem to me Two that he's really zero. taking the time to set up and hit that big powerful forehand. Forced errors, and Roberts may just have psyched himself out. He was so frustrated at the end of game two. Three zero. He uh, he's starting off rather slow. Uh, he's showing little signs of fatigue here by not really bending and uh, approaching his shots a little bit more uh, with authority. Good pass by good Jack. Pass. Very steady, Point. steady shot there. That's one of the few winners in this game that we've seen. Most of them have been unforced errors, and four zero. Now Newman off to a big lead. off the back wall, backhand kill. Now he's starting to look like he did against Ruben Gonzalez. Yes, he's getting into that Five, flow, seven, and here zero. Andy's trying to take a little bit more time in between the rallies. Good shot. Good Side idea out. for Andy to sort of change the pace a little bit, take the ball out early, take a chance here. Roberts. 
One minute. Come on! To live with that. One of the things that is really bothering Andy is, you know, the questionable calls. Here's a shot he didn't think was good, but it obviously looked like it was good. But Andy must work his, his way ten. through what he perceives is some bad calls against himself. He's got to forget about that. He's got to move on. You know, he's got a match to try to win, and he can't win. He can't get back those points that he's already lost. We pick it up at six serving ten. Short serve. Come on, let's go. Side out. He hasn't regrouped yet. Andy obviously uh, is having trouble Possibly getting out of this uh, the doldrum six. of this bad uh, this bad groove that he's in. Great shot, great get and shot for the game. That went through his legs, Third coming game. and going. Jack Newman, two minutes. That's amazing great shot. And that's a winner for Jack Newman. He leads two games to one. The trick is knowing what to sweat and what to let go. That's what this stuff is all about. It always gives me hair that looks great without a lot of fuss. Hurt plus. Great hair, no fuss. The secret to a strong finish is endurance. New high endurance. Just watch how a day's worth of our deodorant outlasts the leading stick even after 24 hours. For the longest lasting, the best deodorant stick, demand proof. Get new high endurance from Old Spice. While you weren't looking, something magical happened. The durability of an oil-based enamel and the easy cleanup of a latex came together. Hard to believe? Try it and see. New Duratex Colors Enamels from Red Devil for the finish of a lifetime. It's tea time on ESPN. Get set for a spot of golf across the pond as an international field faces the unpredictable conditions of the most important championship in the world, the British Open. Thursday and Friday, live on ESPN. in game five of this championship match, the World Racquetball Championships in Minneapolis. Andy Roberts has changed his shirt, and he changed his attitude in game four. He won it big, but it's so close here now. Yeah. Five, six. on the serve return. Side out. Little roll reversal from earlier in this match when Roberts was doing all the talking to himself. Six serves five. Momentum can shift pretty quick. But the key is, is not really so much of, of losing it. It's trying to stop your opponent and, and get it back as soon as possible before it's too late. <sighs> So close. I think that it, you know both of those both of those things can play a part here, but these guys are pumped up and they know what's on the line here. Skip ball. Roberts definitely Point. showing signs of being very tentative on his shots, holding his swing instead of following six, through. Six. Two in a row. Roberts 
is in trouble right now. Newman first to get and then Jackson the put away. 7-6. He takes the lead. Good shot. Very good shot. Timeout. Another good call by Andy. Stop the momentum now. He knows he's lost it. It's in a critical part of the match. He doesn't have any time to really make up for it, so it's really a good good time right now to take a timeout. Here's a great execution of a perfect yeah, splat backhand sidewall front wall match. winner we'll have the by Newman. To the winner and runner up, as well who as is psyched uh, up. And Gordon Roberts, Andy's dad, chatting with him. What does he say to his son during these timeouts? He has his own game plan. He plans his own strategy. And Andy, whether you notice it or not, has a strong ritual on routine and shot execution. And I look for any flaws at any period of time, either in the rallies or in his service. And I just mentioned to him a point A, point B. Uh, he doesn't like a lot of dialogue. He, he's well on top of the game and just reassurance that uh, we need to make adjustments here or there. That's all. After some counseling from Cloud Papa, Andy Roberts returns. He's down by two. Jack Newman's been on a roll and leads 8-6. Jack Newman serves. The fifth game, the, the decider game. for the World yeah. Championship eight, Racquetball six. Tournament. So the timeout did work. He got an instant break back, and he's got that serve. Down by two. Let's see what he does to get a couple points here. I was going to say, do, do you change anything? Was that part of the talk with his father? I would think so. I would think you'd want to get a be aggressive and just stay with what got you here. Yes. There's a tough shot by Newman, but I, li I like that, uh, that Roberts was aggressive on that backhand. Eight, six. Checked out that pen ball. They're going to change colors on that next year, we're told. Next season, we're going to have a professional ball. It's going to be a different color. Oh, two bounces. Good call. There's In a big game like this, Newman being honest says, uh-uh, it, it definitely hit Six twice. Eight. That was a very tough shot there by Andy Roberts. Roberts still He's going with two. the aggressive serve now. He's changing service. shot by Jack Newman, but Roberts had to set up in the center of the court, but just couldn't put it away. Oblivious to the 86. pressure. Both players obviously concentrating pretty hard. And a great shot by Andy Roberts from 38 feet. A complete rollout. This is as it should be. For a while there, both were missing. Now both hitting winners from everywhere. Right now, it's who will crack a little bit, who will make a mistake here and there, and let that uh, let their opponent sort of grab the match. Good serve, big setup, and he buries it with that forehand. Newman made two great gets there. But that forehand of Roberts, you give him two or three opportunities and you can just kiss it goodbye. Good, aggressive serve. Shoot, I go down? Newman barely got it back to the ceiling. Roberts tees off. Great get. Roberts thought he got it on two, but the ball was good. And then the photon. <laughs> no kidding. The perfect angle with the perfect Last speed. Point. Andy Roberts serves. Seven serves eight. Another setup, and there's that kill. Those serves, he's, since he's changed his serve from a lob to a more aggressive serve, he's gotten setups every time to his forehand. No way to beat Andy Roberts if you give him setups to that, that cannon for a forehand. And he's going to stay right with that serve, which is what he should do. Oh, and there's a serve. ace, service ace. Three big serves in a row for Robertson. He takes the lead at 9-8. 9-8. Eight. Eight. 
Jack has to hope for a break here on this serve because Robert's serve is working. Great get by Roberts who just pinches it back into the left corner. Just when you thought Newman had come up with a great return of service, Roberts answers. It all started with that timeout when Roberts was down six to eight. Just that little shift of momentum and here he's serving for the match. Uh, lob serve working again and uh, he made it close. 